Indianapolis, and he went out to ten cities. And here's ten men, but anyway. But ten men that were what? Lepers. That were what? Crackheads. That were what? Alcoholics. That were what? HIV. That were what? AIDS. Come on. That were what? Homeless. He met ten men. Because leprosy back then was no different than your condition today. Mm. They were all a different color. But they all had the same problem. Amen. You looked at one, they all looked alike. Because leprosy ate your nose off. It made you peel. It changed you to bleach color. You may lose a finger here and there. You scale. And nobody wanted to be around you. They were afraid to touch you. They were afraid to even come near you. HIV today, right? Don't you know you're more dangerous to a person with AIDS than they are to you? Because they have no immune system. You sneeze on them, you can kill them. But we're so afraid of them. You know how many places I've been where people had AIDS? And I hug them. Amen. Amen. Pray for them. Lay hands on them. And I watch certain people in the church stare away, come in with gloves and all of this. No, if I had to put on gloves, it was not to protect me, but to protect them. Amen. How many friends y'all know with HIV? Well, come on. Because by statistic, looking in this room, at least 10 of y'all have it. Oh, hello. Amen. If I want to go by statistics. But I've seen people get healed from it. Amen? Amen. Amen. But let's keep reading. <laughs> verse 13 again. No, verse uh, 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers and stood afar off. See how? Which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. Go show yourself. <laughs> Unto those religious folk. Go show yourself unto the church members. Come on. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Underline cleanse. See? As they went in obedience, they got cleansed. Now, what is cleansing a representation of? Oh, Jesus. Oh, boy, we can read this somewhere here. Cleansing means in the Greek to make clean or cleanse. From a physical stain or dirt, it means this, utensils, food, a leopard, to cleanse by curing, or to remove by cleansing. In a moral sense, in a moral sense, people, dealing with homelessness, it means to be free from defilement of sin and from faults, or to purify from wickedness. To be free from guilt of sin. Oh, y'all don't hear me? Amen. Only Jesus can cleanse you that way. Amen. Come on. He's going to purify you free from guilt or sin or purify you. To consecrate you by cleansing or purifying. To consecrate and dedicate. When Jesus cleansed you, he dedicated you to himself. Come on, we ain't finished yet. You've been dedicated to Jesus. Don't let nobody send you to hell despite your condition. Because once you accept him, you have been consecrated and dedicated to him. And can't no man take it away. Amen. 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 Only you can relinquish it. If you want to relinquish it, that's on you. But don't think nobody can take what Jesus has cleansed. Amen? Amen. Ooh, and I ain't even finished. That's just cleansing. Also, cleansing is to do this. Pronounce clean in a Levitical sense. Now, that means he spoke to all of you. You are now clean, bro. You are now clean, sense. You're clean. Let's keep reading. Next part. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed. Now, let's pay attention to heal. Underline heal. When one of them saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. Hallelujah! He began to glorify God. Because why? He was healed. What does healing represent? To cure. Or to heal. To make whole. Now, this is only to be whole to the, to the sense of being free from error and sin now. To bring about one salvation. Oh, no. Amen. So, the others got cleansed. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I accept you. This one turned back. Glorify God. Got healed because he received salvation. Amen. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Baby, I don't want to worry. Rejoice over this. Because now I'm saved. I'm healed. Amen. See, when you get cleansed and he tells you to show yourself, you're still showing some evidence of your condition. You're still showing that you was homeless. You're still showing you were a crackhead. You're still showing. 
But watch this next one. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? <laughs> Woo! Woo! Get chill. Verse 16. So when he glorified God, verse 16, and fell down on his face and his feet and giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Underline that. He wasn't even a Jew. See, Jesus was called for the Jews. He wasn't called for the Gentiles. They know what we just said? Back in the other uh, story we just read. So he was Samaritan. The Samaritan was a half breed. That means he was either half Jew and half Greek, half Jew and half Roman, half Jew, half African. Y'all ain't hearing that. He was a half breed. Now watch this. The other nine probably were Jews. And the Jews were discriminating against Samaritans. They didn't like them. But ain't that funny? If the mother nine had been Jews, they didn't mind hearing around the Samaritan plot. That they all had to say the condition. Hello, we in this room homeless. I see Spanish, white, black. I don't have no problem hanging around. Hello. Hello. Come on, Samaritans. Hello. Apparently, if you got the same condition, y'all are. Good 
they trusted in the Lord. Yeah. So are you ready to let Jesus make you whole? Yeah. Because yeah. today you are cleansed. Amen. You know, some of you do have salvation through healing. Amen. But how many of you are ready to be whole? Amen. That if I saw you tomorrow, I would recognize you because of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, I love that. Because the word whole is this, to save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction. Didn't they what that redemption is? That's what the word redemption means. He rescued you. How did he do it? By dying on the cross for you. Amen. What? From injury or peril. To save a suffering one from, per from perishing. For example, one suffering from disease to make well, heal, restore to health. To preserve one who is in danger of destruction. To save or to rescue him. To save in a technical biblical sense. Negatively, to deliver from the penalties of the Masonic judgment. You know what that means? He's delivered you from the law. Masonic judgment. When Jesus came, he canceled the law and moved you into grace. His empowering presence. We talked about that before. Grace is not a learned favor. It's God's empowering presence. And when you get God's empowering Matter of fact, go to John 1. Thank you. Now we're going to get ready to come to the floor. This one, I'm just going to end it when God tells me to end it. Amen? Amen. I need y'all to see this. John chapter 1. See, in Genesis 1, that's the beginning of creation. But in John 1, it's the beginning of new creation. Do y'all hear me? Amen. Amen. We always hear that stuff about John and, and, and an unmarried favor, but if Jesus had a unmarried favor, he must have sinned. But the Bible tells us he's a man with no sin. So that got to be a wrong interpretation. So grace is this. What was his name called? Emmanuel. What does it mean? God with us. Amen. But I'm going to prove it to you the word. Watch this. Look at verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word is spelled with a capital every single time. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not nothing made that was made. Now, go to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh, and the wealth among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace, grace. and truth. Now, change that word grace here. Change it to God's empowering presence. So he was full of God's empowering presence and truth. So when you get saved, you get grace. God's empowering presence to take you through no matter whatever circumstance you've ever been through. He carries you through it. Amen? Amen. Do y'all see it? It blessed me. It blessed me. Why? Because your sons now. And your daughters now. Okay, Lord. Isaiah 9, 6. Isaiah 9 and 6. Take me down there. We've got a few more minutes. Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah 9 and 6. If I can find the book of Isaiah, I'll be fine. There we go. Isaiah. Watch this. Here it is. Isaiah 9 and 6. For under us a child is born. And under us a son, lowercase, is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called what? Wonderful. That's common. Counselor. It ain't wonderful counselor. He's called wonderful. Then he's called counselor. Right? 